I made a video a while ago talking about DRMs. With the way that they're set up, DRMs are a very easy platform to take advantage of. At any time, companies could start asking their consumers to pay monthly fees to use their services. Imagine if one day Valve asked for 5 bucks a month to use Steam. What would you think? I know my opinion is no more than just that. However, I would not be very pleased. The PC is not a market for these anti-consumer business practices. If you as a company want my money, you better earn it. And I for one feel that any company who asks me to pay a monthly fee simply to just have access to their games is a money-hungry business. When you think of these kind of businesses, you may often think of Sony and Microsoft and say, hey now, I don't think anyone would actually be dumb enough to try that on PC. But only Sony and Microsoft really know how to act like Sony and Microsoft. And I'd like to talk about that today. Now when I mention that Sony and Microsoft are anti-consumer businesses, I'm mostly referring to the gaming aspect of their companies. When it comes down to it, asking for a monthly subscription to play games online with friends is disgusting. You can say, well some people pay 20 bucks for magazine subscriptions, is that okay? Well that's different. These people are getting a physical media, and though I find it dumb that they're actually spending money per month on a magazine, they are legitimately getting something out of it. When Sony and Microsoft ask for your money, you aren't actually paying for anything but games. See, I mentioned it before, but Sony and Microsoft don't host the servers that you play your multiplayer games on. The developers of those games pay for that. Sony and Microsoft just keep the money that you give them and it literally goes to nothing. Yet, this is somehow a service. They even convince people that they're getting free games with this service, and really, those free games are the only thing that the money actually goes to if you're being realistic. So Barry, why are you telling us this? What's the importance of this information? We already know that Sony and Microsoft do this, and we already know it doesn't work on the PC. That's why Microsoft didn't try it on the PC. They just let us have their exclusives. And as true as most of that is, Sony is implementing a system to bring their games to PC as well. Really? That's awesome! Well, don't get too excited yet. In this article posted by PlayStation.com, we read that Sony will bring a wide selection of games to the Windows PC. These games will be a collection of over 400 PS3 games that the PC never got to experience. Okay, Barry, what's the issue? This doesn't seem to be bad at all. Well, as you know, I tend to look at the negatives, and if you know Sony, they tend to be a heavy provider of them. In order to play these games, you need four things. A Windows PC running Windows 7, 8.1, or 10. The PC needs to have a 3.5 Intel Core i3 or a 3.8 GHz AMD A10 at minimum, 300 MB of hard drive space, and at least 2 GB of RAM, and a sound card and USB port. The next thing you'll need is a DualShock 4 controller, which is Sony's PS4 controller, a 5 megabit per second internet connection, and a PlayStation Now subscription to play these games. Again, you'll not be playing PS4 games. These are only PS3 games, so let me break this down. So the PC specs don't really matter here, being as how this service, hardware-wise, could run on a cow. However, the controller is 47 bucks. If you want their wireless PC adapter, that's another $24.99, otherwise you can just plug it in via a phone charger to your PC. And then, you need a PlayStation Now subscription, which is $20 a month, or $45 for 3 months. Sony is actually stupid enough to bring PlayStation Now to PC and ask for monthly subscriptions from us. So in all, the cost of just setting up for this would be $91.99, and then every month you pay $20 to keep the subscription. Now if you're a nutcase, you may say, well Barry, this doesn't sound too bad, at least we'll get PS3 games on the PC, and yeah, but firstly, they're not visually improved. They run at 720p, no options, no settings, you have to play it the way Sony wants you to, and on top of that, we already have PS3 emulators, and those are free. The emulator will improve graphical fidelity of the games you play, and you can play the game the way you want to. I don't think Sony understands that we left consoles because we didn't want to be locked in anymore. To think that we would actually fall for this is so idiotic and before you get upset about emulation, it's legal. I will post proof of that in the video's description. Well Barry, says the guy who's been arguing with me throughout this entire video, what if Sony is testing the waters a bit? What if this is our only chance to have their exclusives as well? Maybe one day, they'll do a setup like Microsoft and put all their exclusives on PC for us to buy, but this is just them seeing if it's worth it. And here's the thing. We're not slaves. We don't have to pander to Sony because this poor billion dollar defenseless little company might be going about this incorrectly. 
Sony isn't an idiot. They know what they're doing, and what they should be doing is what Microsoft did. And here is where I'm going to compare the two. When I thought of a bad company, a money-hungry company, my first thought was Microsoft. They forced you to pay to play games online. They called you a liar if they deleted your operating system, and then they forced you to buy a new one. Every problem for them was solved by us giving them more money. I never thought there would come a day when Sony would take first place, but not only did they steal first, they're making a full-on sprint to retain the title of greediest company. Recently, when it comes to Microsoft, they've given us the ability to purchase their exclusives one game at a time. They even let us choose from where we want to purchase the game. If you go to Steam right now and look up Quantum Break, you'll notice that the game is there. Microsoft could have easily locked the game to their platform, locked it to their DRM like EA does, but they gave more power to the consumer. Not only on what platform you choose to play the game, but from what source. Microsoft did not even think of making their games a monthly fee service, and these are games from the Xbox One. New exclusives, and the biggest plus is these games are re-optimized for PC. Not the best optimization I've ever seen, but there are settings menus. The games are true PC ports, whereas Sony has crapped out this monthly service to try and suck some money out of another platform, and the only bribe they bring to the table is old exclusives that we never got for them to stream to our PCs. And from the PS3, not only is this a ginormous slap in the face, but this is demeaning to the PC platform in general. It doesn't belong here, and I'm so sad that I know that there are those of us out there who will actually partake. Let Sony take advantage of them once again, and if this does well, other companies will soon want to follow. No longer would our platform be as free and open as it is today. As companies grow, they become greedier, aching ever longingly for that quick buck, and for some strange reason, we're so easy to fool. We give our money to them and compassionately defend the actions of these monsters. But here's my thing. Sony, you're an idiot. I hope this fails because as a gamer and a consumer gaming on an open platform such as the PC, the idea of this service thriving makes me sick. I won't be taken advantage of. Microsoft not once ever got $60 a month from me when I was playing on Xbox, and neither will you get $20 a month from me now. I would just as soon never play any of your PS3 and PS4 exclusives than give you any money for this twisted idea of a service. And fortunately for me, I am a PC gamer. There are already quite a few PS3 emulators out there. So not only do I not need your imprisoning service, I don't need you on this platform at all. Pick up a thing or two from Microsoft. Had you decided to forge your own DRM and sell your games for discounted prices, I would have been all for that. But I'm going to end this by saying this. Sony, you don't own me and you don't own this platform. You bow to us, for we are the consumer. We own you. Next time you want my money, you better strive to earn it.